Dosh Dilek, welcome to Tibet This Week, a weekly news that tells you about Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines first. His Holiness the Dalai Lama offers condolences for the victims of Gujarat bridge collapse. Sikyong begins visit to Tibetan settlements in Northeast India. Sikyong and Kalu Nurzin Dolma attends 9th National Convention of India-Tibet Friendship Society. Representative Rigsin Kengang attends Czech National Day celebration in Brussels. Office of Tibet Taiwan partakes in discussion on CCP threat to the world. Office of Tibet Washington DC participates in seminar on China's trend after the CCP's 20th Congress. Deeply saddened by the reports of bridge collapse in Morbi, Gujarat, His Holiness the Dalai Lama has written to the Chief Minister Bhupendra Rajnikant Patel to extend his prayers for those who have died and offered condolences to those affected by this unfortunate accident. His Holiness hoped for efforts to prevent such tragic accidents occurring in the future. On Saturday last week, His Holiness wrote to Speaker Nancy Pelosi to express his sympathy over the physical attack on her husband, Paul Pelosi, at their home in California. The Speaker of the Tibetan Parliament in exile, Kemposonam Tempel, also wrote to Speaker Nancy Pelosi, expressing his sadness and extended his heartfelt prayers for speedy recovery of her husband, Paul Pelosi. Sikyong Pemba Tsering of the Central Tibetan Administration began his two-week official visit to Tibetan settlements across Arunachal Pradesh and Meghalaya in the northeast region of India. Upon his arrival at the Tizu airport, Sikyong received a warm welcome from local Indian and Tibetan leaders and officials. Sikyong then met and interacted with local Indian officials, followed by visit to Lagun Changjuk Chiling Monastery, Tibetan Settlement Office, Offices of Tibetan Cooperative Society, Tibetan Regional Freedom Movement and Local Tibetan Assembly, Minzikang Branch, Tibetan Health Care Center, Nursery, Old Age Home and interacted with staff and students of some Buddha Tibetan school. Sikyong visited each of the five Tibetan camps and interacted with settlers who arranged a culture show and Sikyong on the next day addressed the public. At Mio Chempeling Tibetan Settlement, Sikyong toured the monastery, offices, healthcare centers, and local Tibetan residents and addressed the Tibetan people. On Sunday last week, Sikyong Pemba Tsering and Speaker Kempo Sunam Tempel attended and addressed the 60th founding anniversary of Tibetan Homes Foundation Masuri as guest of honor. Sikyong Pemba Tsering also toured and inspected the Tibetan Homes Foundation School's office, classrooms and library and attended the 46th governing body meeting of Tibetan Homes Foundation Accompanied by Kasur Mutuk Thongjung, Secretary Jingmin Namgyal from Department of Education, Deradun Tibetan Settlement Officer, and the members of Governing Body of Tibetan Homes Foundation. This week, Sikyong Pemba Tsering and Kalun Nurzin Dolma of Department of Information and International Relations, CTA, attended the 9th National Convention of India-Tibet Friendship Society at Rajkir International Convention Center in Bihar. Sikyong presided over the second day of the conference and addressed the gathering by sharing the background of India-Tibet friendship from socialist leader J. Prakash Narayan to the formation of the All-Party Indian Parliamentary Forum for Tibet and briefed the delegates about the legal status of Tibet under international law and his continued advocacy for Tibet internationally. 
Kalun Nurzin Droma, while appreciating the India Tibet Friendship Society for organizing the conference deliberating for Tibetan cause, expressed her gratitude to the successive governments and the people of India for the kind support and help to Tibetans, including their contributions to safeguarding the Tibetan language, culture, and religion for the last six decades. The two-day conference with the theme Save Tibet, Secure India was inaugurated by His Eminence Professor Samdong Rinpoche. More than 150 members from all over the country attended the conference. Representative Rixin Chudin Kengang joined the 104th National Day celebration of the Czech Republic in Brussels on the invitation of His Eminence Etika Harta, Czech Permanent Representative to the EU, his Eminence Pavel Klagi, Czech Ambassador to the Kingdom of Belgium, and His Eminence Jakub Landov Kisi, Czech Permanent Representative to NATO on Friday last week. The event was organized at Circle Royal Golwas, located at the heart of Brussels, which for decades has been meeting point for diplomats, scientists, politicians, academics, and corporate executives. Representative Kelsang Gelsen Bawa of Office of Tibet and Secretary Dawat Sring, the Director of Tibet Policy Institute, participated in a discussion titled Concentration Camps in East Turkestan and the CCP Threat to the World, organized by Uyghur human rights activists. Representative Kelsang Gelsen Bawa spoke about the situation of Tibet and Uyghur, while Secretary Dawat Sring stated about the destruction of Tibetan Buddhism by China. Secretary Mingur Yutin of the Office of Tibet Taiwan attended the 11th Global Assembly of the World Movement for Democracy in Taipei from Tuesday last week for three days. Secretary Mingur Yutin met with Audrey Tang, Minister of Digital Affairs of Taiwan, and spoke about CTS digitization and e governance. The event was attended by Tsai Ing Win, President of Taiwan. Yu Si Kun, President of Legislative Yon Taiwan, and Maria Reser, Filipino Nobel Peace Laureate. Chinese liaison officer of Office of Tibet, Washington, D.C., participated in a seminar titled China's Trend After the CCP's 20th Congress, jointly organized by the Federation for a Democratic China, All China Women's Federation, and other four U.S. based Chinese federations in New York. Chinese liaison officer Sultim Gyatso pointed out that the exclusion of Tibet from the discussion during CCP's 20th Congress and the failure of the Xi government to nurture Tibetan leaders to oversee the welfare of Tibetans was, in fact, a failure of the 60 years of their illegal occupation of Tibet. He further reminded the gathering that the vigorous demonstrators against the zero COVID policy in China are mostly Chinese and conveyed embedded hopes of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the Tibetan administration and the Tibetan people in the people of China. The seminar was participated by prominent Chinese activists, researchers, analysts and many others. That is all for this week. See you in the next episode of Tibet This Week.